In today's video, I'm gonna teach you three things you can do to help your dog love grooming if they already hate it. with Zen Dog, where I coach you on how to help your dog love grooming. On this channel, we're gonna talk about dog training, dog grooming, and all of it in between. It doesn't matter if you try to groom your dog yourself or if you take them to a groomer. If they've learned that grooming is a really unpleasant experience and they've had bad experiences at the groomer during the grooming context and all of that, it can be very easy and it can quickly turn into a really strong fear in your dog. Let's talk about why your dog hates grooming. If you watched last week's video, which I will link up here in the corner, you will understand that choice is very important for dogs and allowing them the choice to leave a scary situation will actually help build their confidence for the future so that you can get towards stress-free grooming and have a more pleasurable experience, whether you're grooming them or if you just know that they're not enjoying their grooming experience at the groomer. Trust me, I'm a groomer and I still found myself with dogs in the grooming salon that were fearful of grooming or afraid of grooming and ignoring that fact and not working with them did make the situation worse and it will likely make the situation worse for you as well. This is why I have made cooperative care and helping people understand why this is so important a big priority in my training. Number one, talk to your groomer. Most groomers, a lot of groomers are not 100% honest about how your dog actually feels for grooming or how your dog behaves during grooming and there are many reasons for this. Let me explain. Your groomer does not want to upset you. Sharing the truth and the honest about what your dog is really feeling might cause clients to find another groomer because they may assume that it's the groomer that is making it hard for the dog, which can still be a fact. I don't want to gloss over that. but. The good groomers might not really tell you how your dog's feeling because they're afraid you're gonna leave and then they worry about who's actually gonna get their hands on your dog and if it's gonna be good for your dog. Or perhaps they just don't care that the dog is stressed. There are groomers out there that see stress and feel you know, internally that that dog is just not cooperating on purpose or that dog is being a pain to them on purpose or making it hard on purpose and they take it very personally and they get super defensive and they make it hard for the dog to enjoy the process. You don't want that happening either. There could be pressure in the salon to get things done and to make money and to get another dog going right away or they don't sympathize with the pet. They don't actually feel like being patient and going slow is gonna make things any better because they, like I said, they just want to get it done. Or maybe they don't even recognize the stress. Dogs speak with their body. They don't speak verbally to communicate like we do. They use their body and really if we're being honest there, people use their body to communicate too and it's all, it's all just like under the radar. We see these things and we don't really know what we're seeing, but dogs use canine body language to communicate and groomers don't always understand what they're seeing. So I recommend starting a conversation with your groomer. If you like your groomer and how they groom your dog and the look that you get from your dog, work with your groomer. Ask them some questions like, um, how does my dog behave during grooming and what do you think is stressing them? Or if you have a dog that is stressed during grooming, how do you, as a groomer, how do you proceed or what actions do you take or what things do you do to ensure that the dog enjoys this process? Things like that. Ask them questions. Ask them detailed questions. Ask them you know, if they give the dogs breaks or what would constitute a break or um, if they use muzzles and what would constitute using a muzzle. Ask them these questions because that's gonna really open your you know, understanding of how that groomer is gonna deal with your dog and that might also open the conversation with your groomer as to how your dog behaves. And if you're looking for a new groomer, these are also really great questions to ask. Um, and that actually gives me an idea. So if you would like like to if you would like more information or if you want me to make a video on how to talk to a groomer and how to pick a really good groomer, leave a comment below because I would love to do this video actually. Number two is avoid home grooming. I've seen it all. Trust me, I've seen so many home haircuts. I have seen so many attempts to give their dog a haircut at home. And this can really damage your groomer's goal style for your dog. Actually, 
The truth is that um, groomers don't give you all the nitty gritty details about your dog's style. They just tell you or ask you the basics, like how do you want the ears to look? Do you want them long? Do you want them short? Do you want them round? Have tail, legs, feet, etc. But your groomer is very detailed oriented or good groomers are and they know that they're growing the cheek hair back to make a round head and they know that they're um, growing out parts of the tail because um, another groomer had to shave it or they had to shave it from matting. Your groomer knows that they have a goal and a, um, a destination that they're getting with your dog's haircut. So. If you try to give your dog a haircut at home, you can undo all of that and you can make it very hard to fix. So don't be surprised if you give a home haircut to your dog and you go back to your groomer saying, oh my gosh, I tried to do this because I wanted to save a little bit of money or we couldn't get into the groomer in time. And don't be surprised if your dog actually just needs to be shaved and start all over. But that's a whole nother topic and we'll definitely talk about that. But another thing that you could do is you could cause damage to the relationship between your dog and the grooming context. And you don't want that to happen because like I said in the last point, uh, uh, earlier part of this video, Groomers aren't 100% honest with you unless you ask a lot of questions about how your dog feels at the groomer because they don't want to upset you and, and send you away and all of that stuff. So your groomer might actually behind the scenes be working really hard and patiently to help your dog love grooming, which could be why maybe your dog takes a little longer to be groomed and you're not really even sure or maybe you just thought that that's normal. But they might be being very patient and letting your dog have lots of breaks and giving your dog treats and such. And if you try to groom your dog at home and you, number one, never were told that your dog has a hard time or feels bad, etc., about grooming, you might think that this could be really easy and you could just do it and it doesn't work out that way, I'm so sorry to say. So avoid home grooming. Not to mention you can even injure your pet and I have actually seen injuries from home grooms in my professional career and it's upsetting for everyone. Um, no judgment if you make that mistake, but just learn from me now that don't do it, okay? Don't do it and I hope that if you've done it by accident, you've learned from your mistake, but don't do it because you can really hurt your dog. I've seen um, one instance where a woman, she had a mat on her dog and she pulled the mat up and took scissors and tried to cut it off However, when you pull hair on a dog, their skin is much looser. So what happens is their skin is gonna do this. It's gonna pull up with the hair. And if you just try to cut the hair off, there's skin in there that you didn't know and you could cut them and it's so sad. But other things are dogs can get their ears nicked if people try to cut their dogs at home. Elbows and armpits and all of those little you know places can get nicked. Home grooms can also do clipper burn and all sorts of things, so avoid that. Just don't do it. If you absolutely have to have something fixed, just call them. Call your groomer and say, I know I don't have an appointment for a few more weeks, but my dog can't see. Is there any way you can just take care of that? And your groomer would probably say, yeah, because we hate when people cut their dog's hair. Trust me. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell because next week's video, I'm going to talk about clippers for home grooming and home grooming tools that people use and more information about that. So if you would like that, to make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you'll see it next time. Number three is to train your dog. Train your dog to like this, right? Um, you can train your dog to cooperate and feel differently about something that scares them. It's training is way more than just tricks and obedience, right? That's what we do with dogs in cooperative care. Training will amount to a difference in your grooming experiences. It will bring you to stress-free grooming and you're gonna get compliments from your groomer that says, you know, your dog was so good today or they definitely seen improvement or grooming didn't take as long. You are going to see results and you're gonna reap the rewards if you train your dog. And if you need help with that, make sure you seek out a fear-free trainer. Um, this is someone who has a qualification that you know means that they will not push your dog past comfort, um, mental or emotional or physical, of course. When training your dog to like cooperative care, go slow, take baby steps and keep it simple. The easiest way to get where you want is to break it down into really small um, tasks and just go with that. 
have fun and enjoy the process. Make sure to watch these two videos here. I'm gonna link them for you if you'd like more information and more content on dog grooming at home.